Howdy, and welcome to the Dark Table on RealLibertyMedia.com, RLMRadio.xyz, RLM Radio on TuneIn.com, and RLM Radio on Internet Radio. Uh, we're broadcasting live on FreedomsNetwork.com and RealLibertyMedia.com website. Uh, come on over and join us in the chat room. That's where all the action's at. And uh, the show is hosted by Flash, and here he is. Hey, thanks a lot, Grim. I appreciate the help again. Uh, yeah, and Mary had top secret Grammy dork um, business to tend to with her family stuff, so she uh, she won't be uh, here helping me out today. And I think Grim said that well, you got to have a topic, and you know how I am about rules. So I said, yeah, I'm gonna take the topic of uh, from the RLM chat today. I've got the impression that some people the way they write maybe or maybe the way that I read what they write tends to make me think that um, they're they're trying to direct their knowledge of my knowledge and it's not possible uh, I made a quick joke to Grimm before the show about it and it's not a real complicated topic but it's a real personal topic you know how do you know what i know or don't know well here we go you know it's stories people tell you and then you've got this like computer in your head that mixes and matches shit together so you can make some semblance of sense out of it maybe uh, you know i guess we all look at all this crap a little differently but uh here i'll go just reading off the um chat room stuff i'll start with bunyan paul bunyan's here he goes there is no guest to my family getting regular praises from strangers when we are out in public well in the public uh no guests at all our faith shows out there people from all walks see it even the muslims around here who run the ihop on madison <coughs> yeah and you know i've always thought people are basically all the same i mean we act out differently. Um, I'll give you an example. I've talked about my buddy down at the train station. He runs the the cigarettes and you know the liquor. It doesn't sell liquor, but they got beer and cigarettes and trinkets at the train station. And Mohammed was uh, just had to go to Pakistan, where he's from. And somebody close to him passed away, so he had to go back. And he's been back a little short of two weeks and I ran into him down at the store and had a minute to chat with him about it. And the disappointment what on from him was about every time that he turned around, he had somebody asking him to prove who he was, show me papers, that sort of thing. But when he had questions of them, nobody wanted to answer his questions. So I, I don't think it's America or England or Denmark or Russia or China. I think it's um, the way we interpret the shit that we um, physically go through. And some people maybe take it a little further than it needs to go. You know? uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't enjoy. Uh, I don't enjoy the. F the physical confrontations that life has to bring us, you know, it takes a while to heal now. So, uh, I broke a few fingers about 15 years ago and that's the, the last trauma of my adult life was, uh, a log slipped and crack, you know, a few, few broken fingers for a couple of weeks, but the way people talk and, and just watching films and whatnot, Violence is so um, so common. Like every day, you go out and see five people get shot, and some guys jumping off a building over here, and another guy runs his car into a house. It, but no, these things I've never seen them happen with my own two eyes. But you know, the movie reminds me that it's real every time I turn it on. <laughs> let's see. Let's go back to the old. Uh, Everyone has faith. Let's see. Fine, use it, but it not needed, not in a guy in the sky. Well, you know, subjectivity is kind of interesting, you know, because 
I can't tell you what the color blue looks like to me, but I can identify it and say that looks blue. And if you're colorblind and you can't see blue, maybe you wouldn't know what the fuck I was talking about at all. See, but we'll always argue, hey, there's a good topic too, is that it doesn't matter what we're arguing about. All that matters is that we're arguing with each other and not getting along. That sets the balance for the things that you see in life to happen. And I think in an honest world where people were not deceiving us in every level of communication, that we wouldn't get the results we get. We would have the balanced world that everybody you know dreams about. And oh, you're you're uh, what do they call it? Utopia. Mm. I don't know. The one I'm in isn't that bad. But even without speaking the language, I do recognize um, the the stru- the structure of society and and how it it a how it it comes through in people. That's the way I'm tr- trying to explain it. You know, looking on to them, well, you can see by their hair and their tattoos or lack of whichever way you're looking to come to a decision about what kind of person you're dealing with because appearances are just everything in this life, right? All we care about is being pleased with what we see. Mm. At least that's the way I look at it. You know, everybody else has got a bunch of other reasons, but, you know, I think I just want to be a happy fucking guy sitting, you know, spending the the last part of my life um, not having to um, to fight so hard and all that shit and, and run so fast and do so much. And it's time for me to slow down. And there's still a world going on. They shot up um, Freetown the other day. And uh, I was telling Cirque that there's more to this than they're telling us. This is too... It's too perfect. They got a lot of American investment, and they want that war on drugs coming. Well, what Cirque told me, what the Danish people ended up doing is now they want to push for it to be um, legalized. Not decriminalized, but hell, you know, the government's got to get their cut one way or the other. So they're going to take the black market away, I think, and uh, they're going to put give it state control. And Freetown's done, so... You know, one more step towards that click on the door before you go to bed at night. You know, I'd like to think that um, that I'm free. I don't know. Maybe not. I, I don't feel like I could just get up and leave and go to Scotland at four in the morning if the whim come. But that's because I take the being with Cirque seriously. And it, see, I mean... All these laws and regulations and people telling you what to do and how to live and what is right and what is wrong, it's not to get us to identify these things. It's to keep us in a constant state of fucking argument and disagreement and my side's shinier than your side and you blah, 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 compete and, you know, one guy stands above the rest as the best. whoop de fucking dip I think there's more to life than um, scratching and clawing. But that's what we're good at. You know? I mean, even in, like, say, artwork, I would take a perfectly good piece of, of uh, glass and take an etching tool and just mar the fuck out of that piece of glass. I mean, scratches, and the, as you scratch, you, your design comes out or your picture comes out a little bit more. And, and as time goes on, you got something. But it's it's still a destructive act in a way to me. And I really like it. I mean, it's not like, whoa, I wish I didn't do that. But... Uh, all this, all the violence and and stuff. You, you, I think maybe I emulate the things that I'm familiar with through you know through the artwork, or I have and at at times. 
let's go back to the chat. I I don't do this show very good without Mary. You know, Mary's like my crutch. I can always bounce something off her. Um, whose nerves were you referring to? Well, oh, I've struck a nerve. Oh, the old hands routine. Beth's good at it. My hat's off to Beth. Yay. Yeah, man, somebody give me a call and uh, make it easier to talk about something specific. Or I could do this. Here we go. I'm going to completely destroy the show. I opened up a physical copy of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy last night because I I, I get high and just don't know where to go with a conversation. So uh, unless something going, let me go back to the RLM chat. Let's see. I cut trees. Hey, man, you know what? Yeah, I've cut trees down, too. I'm not for cutting trees down, no. I think it's uh, I think it's a terrible waste of nature to use trees instead of hemp. And, But then again, there's a lot of nice stuff that's made out of wood that is one of a kind. So, you know, a little destruction with your cereal in the morning, I suppose. I seem to be, oh, let's see. I don't know. She's talking to somebody, but, uh, I, 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 I. ah, well, see, that's the opposite. Paul Bunyan is talking about, you know, being a giving person. And, you know, there's people like me. I'm not, I don't consider myself a giving person. Um, I consider myself more, um, I'm a taker, I think more than a giver. I, I don't tell people, no, I won't do that. I don't mean it like that so much as I'm just, uh, that's the way I'm wired. I think we're all wired a, a little differently than other, you know, you're one way and I'm, I'm another. Well, it's like this uh, liberal and conservative shit. Even Circle tells you, well, you lean towards the conservative. But I don't see it, of course, She's the one looking on and passing on a judgment, so it's kind of fun. And let's see, they're still going at it about God. Blessed with rewards of your work. Mm. And you can show your gratitude in many ways. Well, yeah, that's that's cool. A lot of people don't even think about other people. They're too busy doing shit to notice you're even in their way. They're, we're like an inconvenience, something that got tossed in front of them and they're trying to dodge around us. <laughs> but, but it could be worse, I suppose. Um, ties another fast. Well, okay, my take on what I'm reading you know, from the RLM chat is it's subjective, you know, and it's going to be based on how I feel about what I read. So it's, to me, again, it's just like a personal kind of a thing. And I don't know. I think discussing it with you in a uh, in a way that brings on some kind of a imbalance in it is the whole point, is so that we can be arguing with each other and not getting along. Because if you could go through a day and just, get along with everybody, it would probably freak you out and you wouldn't like it. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. Anyone? Yes, anyway. Wait, anyhow, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah. No, that's fucked up, man. Burning. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, then again, it depends on, you know, what kind of crap the government's up to and wants the land cleared to do this and that kind of nonsense. There's a, And then there's money transactions that go on. Every, everything that we need to know is right in front of us, and it, it's, it's buried under all these details of bullshit, like land ownership and uh, property ownership whatever you want to call it, mining rights and this, that, and the other. Everybody wants something for something. Okay, that's a given. But what we can't all seem to agree upon is that the people that wrote the game that we're playing 
have deceived us all in every possible area of deception there is. So I don't see how you can go into it looking at, well, they lied about this, but, well, I believe that. So I went the other way and just, well, if they lied about one thing, they lied about everything. Because these are the people representing me in the world. This is what I'm taught to believe when I was a, a child. And these people are, they're stand-up people and they're good folks. And yeah, some of them had to go to war to protect you. And as I got older, I started to take a really serious look at the things that I'm being protected from by the military. And there isn't anything I, oh, the terrorists. Okay, show me. Show me where there isn't an, an American uh, industry in there stealing from them that they got no reason to be mad and fight back. I mean, that's a terrorist. And the government, the U.S. government, the English government, the Danish government, all of them, fucking Russians, Venezuela, all of them. It's a big scam. We're, we're just being taken... Um, taken advantage of as uh, as like a collective you know and some people want to spend their time um, being right about things and, and that's it's all that education shit you know well, oh I've got a paper that says I know a lot of stuff about a lot of things well you know hoopty fucking doopty we're still burning fucking oil are you you show me how fucking smart you are and get us around this bullshit that we live in. You know, anything that's good for us, we're not uh, legally. It's it's not attainable, and it starts with hemp. And then the things that are attainable, like an inoculation, so that let me see if I understand this right. But they say that if you don't inoculate your kid, then your kid will get the kids that are inoculated sick. And that's their uh, the stand for their argument. And wow, either I'm just losing it at my age now, and I'm not making sense of what's going on in, around me anymore. Maybe I'm a losing the ability to you know to read what's really there. I'm making up my own stories. <laughs> what's wrong with burning oil? Well, Walter, hey, why don't you give me a call and talk? Let's talk. What's wrong with burning oil? There's plenty fucking wrong with burning oil. It's barbaric we have technology that we had technology when they thought of burning the fucking oil that was superior to burning the oil but what they did was they spent a uh, hundred years 80 years telling people it was the worst thing in the world for them when all along the truth well truth came out finally but they're trying to say well recent studies indicate no they just won't admit that they've been lying and they got a lot of people in prison making them a lot of money they privatized the fucking prisons wow now they make they <laughs> they make like Kevlar um, baby covers for daycare centers and shit like that you know swimwear <laughs> seen it on a TV show too they got this wow this is entertainment now is you have a, a a women's prison and all the horseshit that goes along with it. So it makes it so common and you know matter of factly that it doesn't bother anybody that there are women living in prisons for you know stealing a little bit of money or being married to the wrong guy and shooting him or whatever the fuck it was and. It's I in my whole life I cannot see all these things happening that happen in on you know television, but you read about it in the newspapers. You know Charlie Manson and who else? Who I'm, who's Cirque's favorite? That Jeffrey Dahmer guy just Cirque gets all excitable about that one for some reason, and I look at a lot of this stuff and wonder. It seems so made up, you know. I, maybe it never even happened, but I wasn't where, you know, where it was happening. I just hear the stories or read a book or whatever. But then again, I remember them telling me Oswald shot Kennedy. And here all these years later, 
who shot Kennedy? Who cares who shot Kennedy? That was 50 years ago. What do you care for now? <laughs> Ask somebody that's, what, under 20 years old how, where they were on when Kennedy was assassinated. You know, it wouldn't translate very well. Mm. Let's see. You would sink to third world poverty if you stop using oil. Well, exactly. You can't make the transition in uh, less than, say, six months. And it would have to be a a huge attempt by a, a large group of people to make it happen. But you could replace it with hemp, hemp oils and hemp materials and hemp machinery. And it takes about four months to grow a crop to maturity. And then at that point, whatever you're going to make out of it, so you would have four months to put the machinery together. I mean, it, see, all this shit's just a matter of greed because a few people want to own the color blue, and as a you know, as a group, we we all just go, yeah, I want to be a billionaire. That sounds cool. Wow. Okay, but you know, that's what you see if you watch enough TV or movies or whatever the fucks out there. This YouTube stuff. You know, it all boils back down to the same thing. Somebody is telling you what to think about something. And here we are, this group. There's oh, 22 people, and there's like six of you on the show here today because it didn't get Grammy. But uh, there's that many people that all think for their self but they express it in different ways about the same shit. And it, see, it's all subjective. It's how I read it. But I don't know. I don't know why it's important to know things uh, or for other people to believe the same things you believe. I think the results around you show you what is and what isn't. So it must be how you interpret that. It's a personal thing. Can I, I could not explain my interpretations to somebody else, but I understand what I think because I'm the one doing it. So, oh yeah, documentaries, yeah, it, you know, all that. It's, it's not about the history. It's about how over time the history doesn't have a meaning anymore. It's just something you tell somebody that happened 50 years ago and they could give two fucks one way or the other what happened 50 years ago because they got a big thing going on today (laughs) Mm. yeah i agree with the that bunion is the uh yeah i think the bush family had something to do with it or whoever they're connected to but the whole thing so uh when you look back and see what there was physical proof of photography and stories and where people were on that particular day, it's like Giuliani not going to building seven. Yeah. Right. The whole thing was too perfect and all the wrong people got, got away with what they got away with. Let's see. Lucky CIA people. Oh, I thought the CIA can't touch you on American soil. They could come get me, but they can't do it if I was in North Carolina or Florida. I wonder how true that is. I don't know. Cops just point guns at you and put handcuffs on your hands. So what are you going to do? Hey, show me proof. (laughs) They're already taking you to somewhere. So it's kind of pointless. And that's, see, there's that part of what the flight fight or flight I've never been at because the few times that got arrested I didn't fight it I didn't see any reason to make it worse but then again you know never any big deal you know nothing serious enough to lose any sleep over so it's easier to say that I guess when you when you've had it easy compared to the guys that have had it really rough you know, because I was always the smallest. That really played out well for me in my life. 
uh, there was a lot of protections from other people because, hey, don't pick on the small guy. <laughs> and then there was other times where it was, oh boy, here he comes. Mm. Here, let me let me read back from the the chat. I'm not saying what we each think is wrong or bad, just on the topic that was being chatted on. Religion, God as man presented it, is not not knowable with yes or no, nothing more. Well, I disagree with her on that. I think it's all a personal matter, and if I believe it, I don't care if you believe it or not. It's not, got nothing to do with me. So I either wouldn't voice my opinion on the subject in the first place and just keep it to myself or be honest and say I'm not really sure about the whole thing and from what I, what I see, what I understand, nah. I don't think it matters. I think it's personal and guys spend way too much time arguing about shit that has no conclusion than you do fixing things that are broken. Hmm. Oh yeah, the sure. He how coincidental, you know, that we can look back and and see that in the 60s there was a, a silver certificate printed by Kennedy when he got assassinated. About, what, six months? Oh, it was in, like, June of 63 that the dollars were printed. And now they're, like, collectibles or something, if you can find one. But, wow. And then Nixon, Jesus Christ, what he did in the 70s was... We'll never recover yeah, you know, America has been done for so long, and and you you guys are just watching it burn now. It's like snap, crackling, popping. Yeah, I think I just saw a thing about uh, riots in Wisconsin, and I don't know. I don't watch the news or anything. Yeah, it's a chat room, and you're chatting, and yeah. But see, when you always have to know something, that's I don't know. That's kind of putting me in a... I I wouldn't want to be there. Oh, you have to know. I don't know. Half the shit I say, I'm just guessing at. They say the world is round. Okay, maybe it is. You know, gravity is real, so I'm sitting in this chair. Okay, I don't know. What if they're wrong? Or what if they lied about that the same way they, as they lie about... They put poisons in the uh, in an in, as an ingredient into a, an inoculation that they're going to put into a human being and this is okay with people. I do not fucking get it. Um, then, what, Mary? Wow, she she was really upset about that kid that got shot. You know, a lot of negative. Freetown got shot up. Now, I didn't see it. I don't, I'm waiting for video. I want to see it with my own eyes or talk to somebody that... I know that's been there recently, but no, I'm gonna just. I'm, no, I'm. I. I think I've came here to um, where I'm at in, in this country, and live the way I do because I'm just tired of all that drama, and it not even the reality of the drama, but the, just the hearing of the drama all the time. It it really does drag me down and it's like fuck man this is the first thing in the morning if i turn on the computer i'm starting to turn it on and play games or something instead of checking to see what happened because it, every morning is almost worse than the morning before you know and then whoa then you get to the potus holy shit man and it doesn't matter i know we play this game all the time but st but the idea that the public could be satisfied at all with the two choices that they have. You know, you would think that the public would say, no, get those lion thieves the fuck out of there and bring us two people that, you know, would do a decent job. But the politicians seem to actually represent the public because everybody's going to vote for, uh, well, 31% are going to vote for Hillary or Donald. And wow, where's everybody else at? So when you tell people voting is a big scam, they don't they don't seem to understand it the way it was really designed. They understand it the way the media and the schools 
bully you into believing it works when it doesn't work that way at all. Mm. You can post on here all day and all night about how things actually do work. And at the end of the day, people still disregard the knowledge most of the time and go with the way they see it themselves. And that's what we that's what we do. Yeah. And then how do you really justify um, feeling good or bad about an opinion? I mean, crying out loud. I like teasing Cirque about the um, the Earth isn't round because she's got a science, you know, sciencey kind of thinking and education and all that, and I don't. So I'm not glue bound to anything. I don't care if it's flat or round or shaped like a box. Doesn't mean fuck all to me. It's too big for me to handle. And hey, there you go. There's another thing. Is you know, after something gets to a certain size. It's too big to manage. People can't handle it anymore. And what it does is it encourages the graft and the corruption and the the dishonesty that you get. You're invited and in by making it too big. And they've conned the 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 small guy into believing this thing is too big to fail when the truth is it's too big to manage and everybody's stealing. <laughs> so we get some social problems. Yeah, and it's not just here in Denmark. I mean, shit, a thief's a thief. And boy, they got their share of fucking thieves with their fingers in the cookie jars over here in this country, too. But I've noticed that when the Danes expose something, uh, they don't tend to like to drag it on out into to the streets and get physical anymore. That stopped in the 90s, if I'm correct. Or if it didn't stop it, what they did in the 90s got enough, uh, it got the population what they wanted, so they didn't haven't seen a need for it since. But this, uh, this Freetown thing might change stuff. We'll see what happens. I don't really want to go down there and poke around, you know, figure, well, what business would I have down there? Hey, they're not selling hash in Freetown anymore. So here I am with an American accent running around Freetown. <laughs> I mean, as an American, I'm looking at that as a trap, you know, just so they can click a picture and keep track of who's in and out and why. I don't know. Maybe I spent too much time watching movies. There may be a good reason for my insanity. Red buds and mulberries are very similar. The leaves are the biggest difference I see. Wow. Yeah, see, and that kind of makes my point is how... You see what you see, and I see what I see, and we can look at exactly the same fucking thing, and on one topic, you'll see a different thing than I will, and on another, we'll see the exact same thing. It's subjective to the person doing it. It doesn't involve us. When it's you, it's you, and when it's me, it's me. And I don't know. People say I'm selfish, or maybe that could be a part of it, you know, is that if I don't take care of myself, well, then what what good am I to those I'm around if I can't be involved doing things? i got to do stuff. That was the other part of, oh, yeah, when we were going on about um, <clears throat> if there was no commerce to be done, period, and people were just raised with the best quality of what was available to all of us equally. That is the answer. And the problem is, well, these six guys want to own everything, and these other seven billion are, are they're all behind it. Why? It, it's an outdated concept. Well, to, to me, to you guys, oh, God loves you because you're all playing it, and you're all, you know, going to church and going to school and going to work and doing all the things that you're told to do so that you can have all the shit you have. And I think that whole concept is a big scam. Yeah, you know, like that Bill of Rights. Here, you got a Bill of Rights, blah blah blah, and these are the things that we're going to protect you, right? And then as you grow up you watch them say well we were only joking we're going to we're going to trick you into giving these rights back to us and it's going to look like it was your idea 
and they pulled it off too. Nine eleven was brilliant, and uh, the truth of it. You don't even need the truth of it. The truth of it is just more misdirection to stop you from thinking about that your own government was so cold it could do that to its own people and blame it on a, a third party like it didn't have it, you know, like it was a big surprise. And now, in hindsight, you know, being 20, 20, 50 years from now, people are going to openly talk about how it happened. But see, for the following, what, we got another 20, 30 years to go, this bullshit to go through, where they keep pounding the old lie, and then the new kid comes along, and by the time, he doesn't learn all that crap. So by the time they're 20, it does, it's not even relevant. Some fact in a history book, nobody talks about that anymore. And it seems, you know, with the help of the military in the U.S., they're going to bomb all the reality out of life. You know, anything that was an artifact, they're going to just destroy it. It's rubble now. You can, you better take some pictures because kiss this fucker goodbye. And they seem to be purposely destroying um, history. I don't understand it. I mean, what what was the point of how? Not even what was the point of doing it, but how do they get people to go along and come forward and, and behave as though it was their idea and the government is supporting them? And it's amazing. It's a big fuck. It's a mind fuck. But we all like to be fucked, I suppose. And here we are. Let's see. Let's go back to the uh, RLM and see who wants to argue with me. Oh, 911 was not brilliant. Oh, really? Are you fucking serious? How how do you say that bringing down three buildings in one day and blaming it on an imaginary victim or an imaginary entity that had absolutely nothing to do with it and misdirect all that information and point at other people to take the attention off the people that really did it. And uh, I thought Silverstein ensuring it six weeks before it got hit was, I mean, brilliant. That was the luck of the Jew. You don't get no better than that. How do you not consider that brilliant? I didn't say it was good. Didn't It took genius. I mean, it took some freaking thinking and calculating and sacrificing from, you know, from people to, to actually do what they did. And it was a known thing in New York that uh, the Twin Towers were built with asbestos and they were a problem. But there was no financial way to take them apart, dis dis uh, disassemble those whole buildings it would have been never would have happened so what happened seemed to be a well thought out plan to me because coincidence doesn't seem to work that way for anybody else you know maybe Larry Silverstein but no I'm not convinced and it, it's a shame but bankers they don't seem to care who you are but they got all the people that live on the planet arguing or fighting amongst themselves at some level. I mean, if it's not verbal, then it is, you know, physical. And if it's not physical, the information that you're receiving most of the time is negative and this bad thing happened and this terrible thing happened. And it after a while, that's pretty much the end result of what, you know, what we're getting now. It's well, not... Flash. Um, hey, hey, save me. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to chime in here on the brilliance of 9-11. Um, oh, yeah. It, I think it's brilliant. It yeah, was a no, brilliant it, plan. It, it, well, the, 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 the actual taking down of the buildings. Um, Horrid. Yeah. Well, uh, just, yeah, but the, the, the way it was done using what I do believe were remote control airplanes. Uh, I, I don't 
think there was uh, some hijacker flying those planes in uh, to, to those two buildings. I do believe mm -hmm. I do believe there were planes, and of course there's theories that there weren't. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. no, I do believe they were actual airplanes flying into the building. But uh, and and then to have all of the uh, explosives rigged in there beforehand so that they could do the controlled demolition of those buildings. Uh, there, there was I don't, I don't know if that's brilliant or just uh, evil master planning, but the brilliance comes in the fact that everybody believed the story. And therefore, they could roll out the further their agenda uh, to clamp down and tyrannize, tyrannize, uh, enforce tyranny mm. upon upon yeah. the world, not just upon uh, the people of New York or the people of the United States, but upon the entire world. Uh, and that's continuing on to this day, and, and they keep using it over and over again. And uh, of course, they started the non-ending, forever war on terror. Uh, mm -hmm. which is, is, is just absolute insanity. But the war on terror comes down to, okay, we may go and bomb a bunch of countries and kill a bunch of people because we want to take their shit, but also that part of that war on terror is we're going to come after you because you don't think the way that we want you to think. So that, exactly. that's, that's yeah. where the brilliance of uh, September 11, 2001 uh, put in effect the Patriot Act, which obviously yes. was written, oh, yeah. was written yeah. well before September 11th ever happened. Uh, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and I mean that, that that document was huge and it was planned out very meticulously, and it was ready to be rolled out. And they waited what two three months after the uh, after 9/11 to, to push that out onto the people. Yeah, I think right. it was November. Yeah, two I months. I could look it up. Yeah, so, if so, you want. so basically two months. And if you look at that document, that thing has been written for a decade. Yeah. <laughs> this was not. In, in legalese, on top of it, it's not written in English. Right. So, so when they read it in Congress, what the fuck, what kind of performance was that? Well, Do you think the average guy knew that he was. They were speed reading legalese, which doesn't mean what you're hearing in English. I don't think they even knew that at, well, at you, the even, time. Even reading it, just reading that or any <laughs> any of the other bills that go through Congress this, these days, uh, you can't just read it and, and think you know what's going on there because they reference thousands of other documents. <laughs> and so in order to read it and actually understand what's going on in there, you have to be able to pull up all those other documents at the same time. And mm -hmm. those documents also reference additional documents. I mean, it, it's so fucking convoluted that there's just no way of actually getting to uh, the point of what they're trying to do other than the fact that you know what it comes down to in the end is they're going to screw you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, that's really where it comes down. So that, to me, is the brilliance of 9-11. Mm. Um, uh, Japan retribution. See, now... That's that's a whole different story that that we're, I don't I don't think we want to get into here. But um, <laughs> Pearl Harbor also something that <laughs> yeah you need to look a little deeper into Pearl Harbor before you start talking about Japan yeah. retribution. Wait, um, yeah. Well, there you go because there's the truth that we're told, and then there's what really happened. Absolutely. And, but that okay, and that's why I just go with everything that. I've been told, indoctrinated with, that was all a bunch of crap, instead of just this little bit and that little bit. Because, yeah, if you watch some movie about Pearl Harbor, you're probably going to not like the Japs. But if you know the truth about Pearl Harbor, you'll know it wasn't the Japs that did anything more than was expected. <laughs> hey, anyways, so, so Chloe's asking... If it's a true attack, now see that's mm -hmm. the problem right there is, yeah. is 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 determining that little factoid because how do you know where's the information coming from? It's all coming from the people that did it. So <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. So yeah. that, that that that's where the problem begins. I, I do believe. It, um, and as long as we're disagreeing and fighting about uh, shit, hug you back, that, Chloe. But that's what I believe that the whole point of these <laughs> these things are, is so that we will always be in a disharmony. Yeah. Because even though we all agree how 9-11 happened, well, however that makes you feel is how you react to it. And I don't really think the, out, 
the words that you're hearing have a lot to do with how it makes you feel. I think it just it's designed to bring a response out of us that's not good. We're supposed to – it's like a, a wavelength. I believe in the wavelengths and all that. And maybe if you don't, you should check into it. But uh, they don't physically cripple you, but – they do control the mood that you're in or you'll put yourself i okay let me use me i put myself into a, a mental state of choice if i want to be in a good mood there's things i can do to have good time with and if i want to be in a bad mood i can read about how brilliant donald trump is that'll usually really yeah. <laughs> oh there you are but, you know anyway, that'll yeah, wait, 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 before <laughs> So 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 uh Chloe says so so Pearl Harbor was fake too uh as, in a as, sense, as a yeah. question but yeah. no it wasn't obviously Pearl Harbor misdirected yeah Pearl well Harbor no happened. there's things but, that but, happened that we weren't told about be- it, until years later and then it puts a different light on it here here's the thing about Pearl Harbor and it was an actual real attack but your government the United States government yep. knew it was coming. Yeah. They knew it was going to happen, and just and did like, nothing to prepare. And, yeah, they they did a stand down. They they not only did nothing to prepare, they made sure that nobody was going to respond and that the attack was going to go on full bore because the United States wanted desperately to get yeah. into World War Two. Yeah, the government did. Yeah. yeah, the people didn't want it, but the the yeah. government wanted it. And the the bankers States. wanted it. United yeah. States. Inc. Or yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our owners, yeah, exactly. our collective so, owners. Right, it, the it happened. There's no doubt that it happened. Right, right. <laughs> but the misdirection about how things happen or why they happen is how they keep us at each other's uh, throat with war. Because when I meet people that are uh, that the United States is at war with, they don't seem to take it personal and hold it against me. You know. Right. So. But I can you know, I can understand if they did. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't feel surprised. But nobody holds me personally responsible. But the behavior sometimes is like, wow, you guys are some cold fuckers. That they are. <laughs> well, I met a uh, I met a, a guy from the Middle East in Copenhagen when I first met met up with Cirque. She was getting this coffee or something. I was waiting outside. This guy said, heard me say something to her, and then he wanted to talk to me. And when he realized I was American, he said, oh, do you love your guns? I said, not particularly. Don't care one way for, or the other. Gun's a gun. I, I thought you, you all had to carry your guns. Every, <laughs> he was going on with all that. And then me being, you know, I don't really give a shit one way or the other. There's guns here in Denmark if I want a gun. Yeah, we're all Jesse James out here. Well, what is wrong with people and this registration thing? What don't they, why do they not read or either they don't read or they do not understand what they're doing? What are you talking about? With the registration, when you re- register your gun or your car or your wife, you're giving them over, you're, you're uh, giving into their system. Right. Well, that's what they, 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 yeah, they, that's, it's, it's, you've it's, given it's, them consent to to just bury a fucking hole in you. It's it's become a normalized thought that this is what you do. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's just like yeah. uh, it used to be. I'm sure back in some part of history that I don't remember because I wasn't born then. That when you wanted to do something, you went and did it. You didn't stop and say, "If I do this, is this is this legal for me to do?" To dig a hole in my yard or uh, what? That, that was not a concern. Yeah. But now, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to dig a hole in your yard, you have to worry about if somebody's going to come and throw you in a, in a jail cell for that. Right. It hasn't gotten that bad here yet. But when uh, when me and Cirque were in, still living in Copenhagen, and I I did tell her I said I give. I'll give it about 10 years and this, this town will look just like LA to me. I wouldn't know the difference. And, and it took her like less than six months after that to go, Hey, you know, let's move out to the country. I don't want to go to America. Let's stay here. So we did. Right. And, uh, as 
as the two years and change have gone by, I I see all the uh, all the changes that have happened from afar instead of being in it, and it's a different perspective completely. Right. Well, you know, you live in that socialist utopia over there, so. Well, actually, no, no, it's not a utopia. It's just I think they uh, their problems. They keep their problems small. You know, like what's the best cracker to eat at five o'clock in the afternoon? That you know, they keep their their public things are very um, innocent. It's not like a. It's not like Vegas or anything over here. And it's real, just um, very reserved, private. So it's like Henry Weinhardt. Well, I've never lived in America anywhere that this uh, would remind me of. I mean, I don't feel, oh boy, this place reminds me of Detroit. Nothing like that, you know. I'm constantly aware I'm in somebody else's backyard. Okay. But I don't know whether to call it the socialism thing. I don't know. They still do their they do their trading the same way we do. No, no. All, all governments are socialist. Yeah. All, all every government that's ever existed has been socialist to some degree. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, when you go into defining the word and how it how it applies to this and that, I'm sure. I don't disagree with any of that stuff. I just don't have enough knowledge about it to really voice an opinion. But the hands-on experience I have is that uh, I've lived in three socialist countries so far, and they all do their bartering on the same exact freaking way. But I think their uh, their banking uh, restrictions to the public are a lot harsher in in this country or these countries than in America, but America is catching up. So, what what do you mean by banking restrictions? Like what you could do with money in a bank and sending money and how much you can send and opening accounts and you know handling money through a bank. Okay. There's a lot of American regulations that you know because I'm not a citizen here by any you know paperwork document, so. When you start throwing all these legal things at stuff, it just makes it more fucked up than it already was in the first place, you know. But I think America's banking is getting caught up where you got to show this and have that and, you know, they're doing you a favor because you're, you know, you're not bringing them any profit. You're just one of the things they use to get to the profit. You are the profit. Well, okay, but I'm not that twenty-five, you know, that two hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage loan that they created thin air. That's not me. Right, but you might be a ten thousand dollar car loan. No, uh, uh-uh, never, <laughs> never, never a bank loan in my whole life. Wouldn't do it. All right, all right. So, well, I, hmm, I know I was so unambitious. I disappointed a lot of people. But um, circumstances in life would always take me into a situation where my help was uh, valuable enough to uh, to barter for a place to to live for ten years. <laughs> right. So yeah. So buying a now nah, buying never interested me. But. A lot of people, yeah. You know, well, see, it's all that uh, fractional reserve banking. Once I saw how that worked, I, how could you consider it borrowing? Money? How could you consider doing any of that shit? I don't understand because I wasn't indoctrinated into it. Well, at, at um, some point, you know, you look at things, you, you figure out. Uh, What's going to benefit you the most, and, and if somehow uh, borrowing against your future earnings is yeah. uh, going, going to be to your uh, good side, then then you do it. Um, hmm. And 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 if it winds up that uh, you don't have those future earnings, then you wind up pretty screwed. Or if uh, whatever it is you were planning on doing, 
um, <laughs> turns out to be uh, uh, like, for example, when I when I bought my first house, um, I bought it at what turned out to be the bottom of the housing market. So I got a low price on it, and by the time mm -hmm. I sold it, it was at the, basically the top of the housing market. So I, I wound up with a lot of cash <laughs> that I didn't have before. But those people that bought my house at the top of the housing market, they didn't wind up well. They didn't turn out well at all, because um, the, the housing market fell like a rock. So they all got they got screwed. Right, exactly. So uh, I don't know. I know it's, it's it's all subjective too. How how we interpret the stories we hear from other people about things that have or you know have happened. It, it's it's not a universal thing, and we're trying to be universal about opinions about things that are really huge, and instead of general crap I think that I don't know uh, I guess the society at large it pushes us into like situations and behaviors I can't prove it but I have a theory you know like the aggression the cops have been showing lately how old is that yeah, it's not lately. They've been doing that since Roman times. Right, right, right. But this, <laughs> one, like you said, how old is that? That the cops have, you know, started out patting you on the head and ended up, you know, throwing you on the ground. Always, this is the, the same routine. It always starts out nice and it always ends badly. But why was it going to be different this time? Uh, delusion. I'm going to go with delusion on that one. Right, but if you don't, okay, there's so, this is what's so disappointing, is that there are so many people, and like I was ta started talking about the guy down at the train, His he knows what I know, and we just, we've just gotten to the point where talking is just, it's, how can they not know? What are they not seeing? And that's the question we have left between the two of us, and we can't figure it out. And a lot of it, I believe, is uh, the the uh, the happiness level, or what would you call it? There's there's uh, there's not a lot of drive to to be more than they are. You know, there's not a lot of competition, and and the ones that do are very flashy, and the rest of us sit back. You know, like the bike riders, and uh, well, you wouldn't know, but I'm I'm telling you because I'm here and you're not, and, and I was brought into all this stuff, you know, from America, so and then Scotland and whatnot, so it was kind of, kind of a looking at at the same thing but from a different angle. You know, I don't think the Scots are all that much different than the Danes, but. Every, but, but they are outwardly, but they're just people, you know. But they're that state hold on them is so it it shines off them that they have it. As as a as a country, as a mm -hmm. people, however you want to call them, yeah. uh, they, well, they, it, they've had it's so small, but it's so small that there's only six million of them. Right, but 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 as a, as 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 a country there they've had different experiences than what the Danes have had so the Scots have you know mm -hmm. anger of, against some things and love for other things whereas uh, the, the Danes it's not the, those are just not the same thing so ah uh, and it goes back see it's all about what you're what you're taught to believe you tend to believe yeah yeah, yeah your environment that you were uh, you know brought up through well, I was so stubborn. I don't think that any of the adults in my life really had the ability to direct what I was going to believe or not believe. They didn't seem to encourage one way or the other on that one. I was left alone with it. You know, you figure this one out. Here's what you need to know and choose or don't choose, but blah, blah, blah. Right. Like about the God thing. Because I got 
a Catholic father and a Jewish mother. Okay. So by by law, so wait, but, whatever. But what? Both of those, mm-hmm. the Catholic and the Jew, mm-hmm. both mm-hmm. believe in the same God. Right. I uh, guess. Uh, well, they do. I, I mean, that, that's, <laughs> one of them thinks that this other guy came along in the middle. Uh, and said, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm the son of God, but you just treat me as if I was God. Um, and, and so that's that's the, the only difference there, really. Uh, the, the Jews are Old Testament, the, and the Catholics, various other Christians, are New Testament. Uh, so right. you're both working with the same book, just uh, different mm-hmm. chapters. Well, neither of my parents actually carried the book. They weren't carrying the religion. They were carrying the, the the title of the religion. That's what the Torah is. That what you guys use? Uh, I don't know. That's what I mean. I <laughs> I'm Jewish by the, because that's the way I was made. That's what they tell me. Yeah. I don't feel any Jew any, but you know, I don't I don't feel like I've got that super Jew banking blood running coursing through my veins, and all you people should bow when I walk in the room or any of that. And at least if it's going to hit me, it ain't hit me yet. <laughs> but, I mean, the whole religion thing to me is just, I think it's personal. I don't think it's a joke. I don't think it's a, con- not so much not a conversation piece, but that certain specifics are designed to inspire problems. And that particular direction to go in and is... It's in like in our nature sometime, you know. You can't even once you start, you're there. <laughs> I'm not immune to anything that you know. I'm just another guy on the on the block, Grim. I can't do anything any better than anybody else can. Just me, you know. Right. But that's not the way it reads on the internet. But that to know me, I mean, people that physically know me. We're just friends, yeah. Hey, there she is. The wife just came home, but uh, yeah. So uh, I think that where wherever you are, that the way that you behave, say here on the RLM, is uh, it can be it can it can be read as a representation of things that it's really not a representation of at all. You know, some people like to to fight. Some people do. Some and, people, yeah, yeah. But, but uh, well, who I am on RLM or on the radio or in real life, mm-hmm. it's, it's the same person. <laughs> I, don't, mm-hmm. I don't change. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I don't. I don't have the the, the mindset to be able to uh, create different personalities. <laughs> <laughs> juggle juggle the personalities. <laughs> yeah. Drink a couple of those 151 and prune juice, and uh, drink three of those, and then do a show. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be doing it from the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! Anyway, I don't know. I what? Let's see. Get back to the. Have we inspired any paranoia yet? Nobody's nobody's taken high. Hey, Taco Dork. All right. Well, I'm, Most, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. gonna. I'm gonna go get some coffee, but I'll, I'll leave you with hey, this thought I, before, I, before I come back. None what would that is, be? None of this is real. I know. I'll be back. I'm glad you... Hey, exactly. Ex- and what makes it real, see, that's where he didn't go, in my opinion, is what makes things real is that I believe they are real, so therefore they are. What do I care what you tell me? If I see a flaming yellow chicken and a purple dragon, and that's what I'm seeing. Even if it ain't really there, maybe I believe it's there, then it's there. Yeah. Who knows? But to argue about, oh, you can't possibly... Well, obviously, you've never heard of mushrooms. <laughs> or maybe LSD. You could see some... Or even that PCP from the uh, from the 80s, I think, late 80s, 87, 88... There was some pretty weird shit out there, drug-wise. And I'm not talking your Mary Jane or your hashish. No siree. I'm talking about your manufactured slop by those fucking people at Big Pharma. 
those drug-addled pricks with their three-piece suits and their fancy shoes. And uh, the rest of it, it's just smokeables. Maybe, I don't know. We go a little too far with the liquor t- sometimes, too, I suppose. But I kind of like it. Okay, here you go. No nation could preserve its freedom in the midst of continual warfare. James Madison. Well, Bunyan, I'm going to say something you're really not going to like. It's all an illusion anyway. It's all what you see it is. So, you know, whether America is at war with uh, Pakistan or Russia, as long as it's not Denmark, I'm really not uh, physically involved in it. Might be financially somehow. I can't get my uh, avocados or whatever it is because you know the shipping lanes have been <laughs> interrupted by warfare. <laughs> wow, we're in one fucked up world. In case you guys didn't notice that that thinking about war is just a common off the cuff thing now. Oh yeah, we we fight all the time. That's what we do. We're good at it. We have machines that make machines that kill people. So, and then, wow, this is getting kind of weird. Okay, anyway, as long as the war is in over their stand, it's okay. Well, Taco, yeah, that's the whole point because, you know, when it's when it's you... Me, not you, 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 me, me, you. But when it's me, I don't want to fight with anybody. I don't even like to argue with Cirque. I just tell her, okay, you're right, and I go out and have a cigarette. Go on, be mad at me about whatever I said that, you know, wasn't right. But it's how seriously do I want to take words at the time that they're either read or spoken, you know, and then where do you go with this stuff? You know, you can be mad at somebody for days over absolutely nothing, you know, if you want to be. And again, you, 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 but I'm just talking about, you know, how I'm doing it. And uh, that particular, that being mad at somebody, sometimes it kind of feels good, you know. If you've been brought up with it and you've done it all your life, That nice red hot belly and, you know, the sweat building up and that anger just ready to explode. And then when you finally just fucking let loose, it serves a purpose. But I don't think it would need to serve a purpose had I been taught a better way to live when I was a child than the way that I was taught. And I don't think I can undo what was done, but... I cannot um, drag other people through, you know, an unnecessary event because of something I misunderstood because it reminded me of, you know, that that old excuse. Well, what'd you hit him for? Well, he looked at my wife. Oh, right. She was sitting by the clock, you idiot. You know, (laughs) there's always two... I I have a friend that once told me, he says, "There's, there's three sides to the story. Because I was bitching him about something at work to him, and he was the boss guy. And he says, at the end of the whole thing, he said, well, I talked to her. And there's your side, and there's her side, and there's what really happened. And it really laid a good impression to me that I don't remember it all the time. I'd like to remember that more often than I do and apply it. But sometimes I remember it, and uh, I'm glad I did because... I might be reading the thing that I'm looking at and maybe I'm reversing a word or two or maybe I'm just misunderstanding the way that it was written. And it sometimes takes me a little time to wade through a problem like that, come to a good decision. And uh doesn't involve shit like the Admiralty Court and the Constitution, but, you know, hey, those two things are pretty good. Though. They fucked us both time. They got us every angle, law and... uh society and law and society work together to trick us into believing that what we're doing is good and it doesn't take a very long education to figure out that as a collective of people what we're doing is exactly the opposite of what we should do 
and you can't get people to stop. They they can't. And they, they're trapped in the trap. I'm trapped in the trap. You know, it's like breathing. You know, we breathe. Try explaining to somebody, hey, how you, how do you breathe? Well, I, and then I, and that's about as far as I can go with explaining it. I don't know. I've been doing it my whole fucking life. Don't know what it is. But I could go on the internet and say, hey, you know what? I don't really uh, know how to express that. I don't understand what breathing is, although I know that I do it. I don't understand how I do it. But to go further with it, I don't think I care how I do things. or I, I don't detail. I, call, I tease Cirque about that quite a bit, that she'll take, take things down to the smallest possible fraction. And then all I see is just a puddle. And, and her mind works differently, and she actually still has uh, some kind of contact with what she was seeing in the first place. And to me, it's just a blur. And that's my perspective. <laughs> and you can't share it with anybody. You can tell them how you feel about stuff. or But your perspective is a personal... This is how I see this, guys. It's your own personal haven where you go and look out. So in the long run, depending on my mood, I could be in paradise or if I'm in a shitty foul mood, I could be in hell. And it's all pretty much whatever I want at the moment. But staying in uh, control of that understanding of that particular, because there's so much shit to be uh, that's going on in your life, you know, around you all the time. You're not walking into tables. You're not breaking glasses. You're not doing a lot of things that could happen. And after a while, you kind of take it for granted. And then the time you knock the glass over, then you notice it. Instead of being constantly uh, aware of too much, you get just enough. So what, what the government and society did was they figured out how to electronically and uh, visually inundate us in constant fucking fear and it's around us all the time and I think it shows because we get along together so badly so often and uh, I'm not talking about your trip down into the grocery store or you know something the hardware store to go get a, some paint to do a table I mean go to a baseball game or a concert where there's 20, 30, 40,000 people. And things aren't the same as they once were. There's something physical. I can feel it when I'm, when I, when I was in the airport the last time over in um, Copenhagen. I felt a real relief when I got into a uh, cab and started just a slow drive and got out of that 600 miles an hour. It, it, it's almost like it burns. I don't know. Maybe it's a, 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 a it's a physical way to explain a mental situation, but I was going so fast for so long, and then then you stop, and your body and your mind are almost not together for a bit. It's kind of like, uh, they call it jet lag, I suppose, but it, I experienced it many, many times, and it's not something that I could ever get accustomed to. So where... In my life, do I get the idea that I can become accustomed to anything? It's a decision, apparently, that I can make for myself, right? And, I don't know. Life is uh, life is going where it wants me to go to. And I live in this illusion that I make these grand decisions and choices. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to go there. And it's... When when I look at my history, it was just taking a step forward. You know, sometimes the step would take me from London to San Francisco in a day, but that was the one step. And that's what I mean is these things that have happened have created whatever it is I think I am. And maybe I'm just as uh, – I want other people to not be afraid. There you go. The packaging is scary. The inside is fine. But uh, society has thing about hair. And a man with long hair is 
it still stands out to this day. It's not a common thing. It's it's a uh, and wouldn't you say that? I wouldn't say it's common. My, the length of my hair. No. So and it's not uh, an inner. It's a it's everywhere. Everywhere you go, we've all been groomed to see things, and some of us get um, more controlled about how we respond to what we see than others that's what i think uh advertising for example some people will look at an ad and be mesmerized and i might look at the ad and i'll see the art that went in to make it and go oh great production blah 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 but the that go out and buy a can of coke because you know the girl's got great nipples doesn't work on me and i don't know Maybe it did at one point when I was younger, but I I don't I'm so you know I'm so far beyond it now I I can't remember. Maybe I maybe I don't even want to remember. And who'd want to remember that that they enjoyed something that could take rust off a bumper? <laughs> um, extract from Thomas Jefferson to Thomas Leeper, twelfth of June, eighteen fifteen. Quote. Wow. You know, there's another thing is quotes. Fuck. I got a quote for you. What if these fucking people that lie to us knock it off and quit lying? They know they're lying. And and the sad part is we know they're lying, but yet they're still lying and things don't change. So, wow. How far, you know, how far do we have to be pushed as a whole? Before we actually stand up and say enough is enough, there's not a lot of folks that um, seem to carry that that kind of enthusiasm for a, an honest world where people are nice to each other. <laughs> they seem they seem very entertained by the mess we have. Quote Jefferson Fear. Um, I don't. Well. I don't know. I don't really have anything for or against except that the people that we trust are uh, the people that we're, we're taught we should trust. Let's use that as a way to explain it. Always end up being full of shit. And what they did was misdirection from something else they were really doing. So how can you trust any of them at anything? And that's what I mean by if we didn't have this petroleum shit, the, the oil is, they talk about banking being the bottom. Banking is the bottom of it and the foundation of it, but the oil is the hold, the, the stranglehold they got on us today. And I think they got that hold because enough people put up with this ignorant, fucking archaic hemp it needs to be legalized bullshit. Just stop enough. Apologize for lying and get on with a future. But <laughs> we're we're kind of stuck on stupid, I think. Trust is earned, really. No, I don't need I don't need necessarily uh, agree with that. Sometimes I trust blindly, and uh, that's my decision to make at the time I make it. But you, if that's the way you look at people, that they must earn something that you should freely give them okay i'm not afraid of anybody i don't give a fuck what are they going to do call me a bad name Ooh, that'll make me all worked up mm. well if you just trust anybody blindly anybody then you're you're just lucky to get burned at that point you well, know, I you know, I trust Cert blindly. You know, if that's the case, I know I do though. If, if that's I mean, the case, then 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 you should be sending money to Nigerian princes. Because no, no, what I'm I trust Circle, complete. Yeah, well, yeah but because yeah, you know her. Hmm. <laughs> oh right, right, right. She, but she, she earned that trust. <laughs> well, actually, no, she just didn't lie. Right, but there was no earning any trust. She just every time that she spoke, her words matched whatever I was going to physically see. Right. So there was a physical reality plus the truth. 
Right. But earning, no. That's, that's, nah. the, that's the process of earning, is learning. To you, that, right, right. Well, means no, you have is. a different value system. I don't, mine's weird. Well, I trust you completely. Well, see, and you don't even really know me. <laughs> no, but you've never, you've never uh, once have you ever made a, a direct statement toward a thing that I did not find myself agreeing with. And some of it's pretty rude, but the core of it, yeah. Like your, uh, the cops, how you feel about the cops. Whoa. Do I? Yeah. Yeah, well, they've they've shown through their... Right, but... I know what it takes to be that mad at something or entity to stand up and out loud say that. That takes it, that's going there, man. I appreciate that shit. So I'm saying you can trust somebody because of the way you feel about it. It doesn't have to be earned. It's just that's in my in the way I trust is just I just go with it. Until you do something, and then once you do, then then I've got a, a panic button, and I just stop dealing with you. Okay, so if somebody walks up to you on the on the street and says, mm -hmm. "If you give me ten dollars now, I'll come back here tomorrow and we'll give you a hundred dollars." You trust mm -hmm. that? Yeah, I yeah, I would give them the ten bucks just to get rid of them if I had to, to spare. Sure, wouldn't well, bother but, me but, a bit. But but you're not. You trust but I'm not gullible. No, I wouldn't trust believe. That person? <laughs> but see, that's what I mean. Is who you know, I, I that doesn't even weigh on my value system. Okay. Money, money has no place in my values. Oh, fuck it, money's the last thing I care about. Well, it was just an example. Right, right, right. But it's always right. And I'm just saying that my value system is so obscure to people that most people don't understand how I lived this long. Right. Well, you know, um, and it's because that I believe that the best my intentions are going to bring me my results that I get. So I keep my intentions clean and my results are always great. Now, maybe on a deeper, like some kind of Hannibal Lecter level, I might be planning to do circle in and make, you know, brisket, but I doubt it. You know, it's just a movie. It's not to me. It's not real. But you know, those possibilities where people do and horrible, that's all in TV and, and movies. It's in my reality that I've existed in, most of the folks that I've encountered were very um, sensible, nonviolent and uh, practical people. So I haven't had the, the physical luxury in the last 30 years of violence and all that. People just have been nicer to me. No, the first 25 were a little rough, but once I hit 25, it started to calm down. Well, that's good. Uh, then you've had it. How old are you now? I'll be 57 in three weeks. Wow. Can you believe that shit? And that's what I mean. And the way that I've lived my life. Oh, well, uh, I just hit 56 uh, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. And Mary, Mary's the oldest one. No, she's not. <laughs> oh, you're older than Mary. No, no. Mary's older than I am, but she's not the yeah, oldest yeah. one. She's we, we oldest got, we got older three. folks here yeah. in, in really media chat. We, we, got, yeah. we, got, we got folks that are several years older. I won't mention Oh, that. sure. She abs Hans. What? Hans is what? 45? Hans? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think he's a real person. I think I think he's just a, a, a uh, argument bot. <laughs> no, no, but we get folks in here that, that are that are a good bit older. You know, I don't want to mention any names, but uh, they know who they are. <laughs> and yeah, and I, that's what I mean about the subjective thing is, I I'm sure people have opinions about me, but I'm more interested in mine about them. Uh, uh, you seem to be. Well, there are some interesting characters. And then there's topics that I know I just bring rain on because, um, of course, my my beliefs are based on the things that I've seen or the way I interpret what I've seen or what I think I've seen in my life. And I think the 10 years in, in Jacksonville, North Carolina, living amongst the military was uh, – 
that was an awakening into how the government works like I never thought I could ever have gotten. Yeah. I had a friend, right? We used to drink together. He was one of the Marines on the base. Can't remember his name now. But one day he looks over at me. He says, uh, you want to go fly the simulator helicopter at the at the base? I said, hell yeah. He says, okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to book it for this, this, this. You meet me here in that time, that day, and I'm take you down there. And I wasn't really sure if he was serious when, you know, he's talking about it in a bar drunk, you know. But anyway, it's a friend of mine, so I showed up. And sure as fuck, he takes me to the base, and I'm in this helicopter simulator flying a you know, the simulator. And it was, uh, it was so easy to just roll up on. I just was in the car with him. They didn't ask him for a card or nothing. Maybe his bumper. I don't know. But most people would say, oh, we got stuck waiting to get in the camp. He didn't wait. <laughs> so uh, how many times did you crash that thing? I don't re- a lot. <laughs> but I only went the one time. I could never um, hook up. At the right time, I was kind of busy for that summer, but I did do the the one. So, but it was so easy to get into Camp Lejeune and wander around it, being a top secret freaking uh, helicopter simulator flying it. <laughs> I was a civilian; I wasn't military. So you know, it's it's still it's all not what you know in life, but who you know. <laughs> Okay, well, that was my opinion, and that was you know, me doing it. So, but it, it, things like that happen to all of us, you know. You, uh, if you get out and about, if you stay in one spot where you, you don't, nothing happens. But if you go out into the world, you're going to run into shit. That's typically how it happens. Well, it, it, except for me now. Now, now it's all slow and calm and. I can walk to you know walk down the road. If there's three cars in a row, it's like, hey, where's all these cars coming from? <laughs> so there's a, to me a luxury, you know, from the city all these years to like ten thousand people or whatever around here. It's pretty quiet. Yeah, well, it's nice. You know, I grew up in San Diego, and yeah. it's um, a large, yeah. large town, and then. Uh, whatever it was, 11 years ago or so, I moved out mm-hmm. here to, to this town that there's 2,000, less than 2,000 people in. So, oh, perfect. yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you can get your needs met, and, but you don't have too much. Yeah, yeah I like so, that. So, so you talk about the uh, differences of uh, living in some place like San Diego mm-hmm. uh, to coming here and... Um, uh, certainly, the, yeah. There's there's things that you you don't have that that are available to you uh, that they have down there, whether it be uh, very be employment or retail or uh, the beach, <laughs> uh, things like that. But uh, the, the trade off is is certainly worth it. I don't, well, then again, your rewards are somebody else's burden. You know, my rewards are somebody else's burden. It's a strange world, and it's all this society and the the things it bashes into some people, and it doesn't bash into others. And well, if, we just keep if 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 uh, doing that, if it was going to be a burden upon a person from changing environments that drastically, they they wouldn't do it, not voluntarily. Well, I've changed um, environments drastically a couple of times in life, and I understand it because, yeah, you, you're moving really fast, and then all of a sudden everything stops, and you've got this weird, these weird emotions kind of take over, and you're disoriented. And who knows how long it lasts for each person? Maybe one person will last months where they're never comfortable, and. I don't know. Some people don't like to travel. Like, I love to travel for years, man. I was going everywhere I could get to go. I went there. And here I, I've been in uh, in Denmark for two over two years now. And uh, I'm very comfortable where I'm at. Don't want to even travel anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah, I and then, that. yeah, Cirque, Cirque's uh, family doesn't really want her to move to America with me anyway. It was one of the first thing they asked me when I met them. <laughs> You're not moving to America with Circle, are you? <laughs> no. No, I'm not. In America, to the people that live in town, it's a lot of them either visit there or plan to visit there. And it, it's a very uh, common thing. It's not real far-fetched, but the American living here is. <laughs> why, why would that be? I don't know. There should be. I would expect because of where we are, there would be more of Americans up here. But it must not be a very attractive. Well, I'd say the tax structure just makes most Americans want to jump. <laughs> well, you should probably be glad that more Americans don't decide to get over there because if they did start flooding in there, you would be a hated person. Oh yeah, oh yeah, the American invasion. No, that's not likely. It's. Not, I appreciate what you're saying there, but no. Um, yeah, I think you know, dealing with the the arrogance of, of most Americans would uh, drive a, a humble pe people crazy. Well, I don't think they're so much humble as they are reserved. You know, they got their limit. That's what I mean. Is in society here is uh, it's comfortable. But it's still got a strictness to it. And when people are uh, outside of the boundaries of the strictness that's normal, I watch other people watch them and see it. Because I can't, still can't speak Danish. Can't understand half what I hear. But the uh, what I see, that now that's another story. Yeah. You don't always need words to define something you're looking at. Sometimes just what you're looking at is just enough. And then there's times like when we're on the internet and we're having a, a detailed, in-depth discussion about whether your structure of belief is as good as mine or not, by God. <laughs> does your does my belief structure come up to your code, Grim? Because, well, we have we have obviously different opinions about how to approach how to approach uh, trust and. I think it's well, the value I, I the value system you I, use. I think there's a lot of semantics going on there because uh, mm. you you don't you say <laughs> you, you say <laughs> that you trust people blindly and and I'm not buying it. I, I don't I don't I don't see you doing that. Uh, like uh, when I ask you that question about the guy, uh, say give me ten bucks a day and I'll yeah. come back tomorrow and give you a hundred. You didn't trust yeah. that guy. You were just trying to get no. rid of him. So yeah, you, you, he didn't earn your trust day. yet. He needs to. Earn, so, like I said, there's semantics going on there, right? Because what does trust have to do with ten dollars in the first place, right? It's a, it, it's, it doesn't, right? That was, that was not the point of the, That was not the point of the question. No, 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 no. But it's a good misdirection from the question based on other. So that's what I mean is we all have had our value systems pounded into us some point or another. I play with mine like a word game now. I don't think I try to live up to it anymore. See, and you, and you, uh, the, the one difference there is, you said you give them ten bucks to get rid of them. I'd tell them to go fuck off. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, that that's the value thing. I don't pay money. Money's just a, a curse. It's it's a pain. When you have it, all you have is the luxury of trying to find ways of keeping it. And I didn't find that pleasurable. So I thought, well. Trying find trying to find ways not to have it has been way more entertaining in my last thirty years than chasing it ever was. Right. And the people in my life are they are amazing. Uh, Kelly Kelly might not be a good example because she, you know she checked out on us, but she was a good person to know. And you know I've been. Uh, I've been very fortunate to to have friends like that through my life. A lot of them died, though. You know, who's Kelly? Uh, Kelly, remember the Kiwi, the blonde? I don't remember. Well, when I was in Scotland, um, she got on uh, World Truth for a short period, and uh, and the summer after me and Cert got together, she hung herself. 
and and okay, I, I, I'm missing the connection there, but oh right, but I mean, she was a good friend of mine, and uh, it was just something that comes back to me. You know, was, I've met a lot of good people, and for whatever reason, they didn't want to live anymore. So do you, do you, do you think I've, that's, I've that? Do you think that's directly attributable to them knowing you? No, I mean, that's that's <laughs> his life. No, uh-uh. but there's people that would claim that you're right. <laughs> I met this guy Flash. Now I got to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that bad yet. No, actually, um, but the the few people that I've known that that did. Uh, check out were quite smart people, and uh, it, it's funny how your your own interpretation is so different from other people's. You know, because whatever she was going through or other people were going through, it, it didn't stop them. Uh, didn't matter to them anymore. Whatever we still have, they they passed it up. They didn't want no part of it, but we've got it. Because we're on here, you know, every week or whatever. You, well, you're on here a little bit more, but we're trying to tell people your your government's lying to you and the money's bullshit. You know, basic simple things, and it's um, it's a slow road. <laughs> it is. I mean, you're, you're trying to break through a lifetime's worth of of programming, and you know, to to for somebody to realize actually mm. take in the fact that everything they've ever learned is wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, right. And that, that's, that's a big hurdle to overcome, especially, so, especially yeah. those that that <coughs> weren't already rebellious of nature. Well, what about being afraid of a stranger? Isn't that, isn't that the norm now? You're supposed to be aware and be, beware and protect yourself and, all that happy shit. Um, I would not. I don't know if that's the norm or not. I mean, um, I don't. I don't. You don't know, have. You don't know, have fear of people. But uh, no, it's. You know what it is. I believe. I think I believe that people will not disappoint me. That what I see is what is real to me. Therefore. I expect them to behave a certain way from what I'm vision, you know, what I vision, and and uh, they very very rarely ever disappoint. I mean, you know, you can only be right or wrong, and I'm right a lot of the time. See, that, that's a, that's a huge difference for me. There, uh, you expect X, I expect nothing. Um, oh yeah, uh, sure, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. It's an undefinable – I mean, I can't put a name to it, so to speak, but I know that some part of me, I'm, I have uh, intentions. I do things with intention. Um, I'm crafty. So this last uh, couple of days, I got a little busy uh, making an, uh, a physical action in the house, you know, make my wife smile. But it's because I want to, you know. But my intention is I want Cirque to be happy about something that I did. And that's it. It doesn't get real complicated. Now, it's what, just... what if, what if, whatever you yeah. did, mm -hmm. trying, with the intention of making her happy, mm -hmm. um, had either no effect or did the opposite? Uh, then I would know I was in trouble because <laughs> the woman, the woman has been... Uh, making that, you know, that coffee that she posted, that coffee pot thing with no. the grind coffee. No. Mm. Well, back in the WT days, she uh, maybe it was pancakes. I thought I know pancakes, thought, but uh, she she uh, makes this coffee with milk and sugar and the whole nine yards. One of those frothy, faggy uh, latte kind of looking coffees, mm -hmm. and she. The day that she doesn't do that is when I know I've done something that's unforgivable. And that's my gauge, is a coffee. Because I know I can depend on that. If she's not ill, we have coffee. And she's never ill, so we've got coffee. 
Well, she might just be tired one day or not be in the mood to do it. And then you're going to think that she's mad at you all of a sudden for some reason. And <laughs> Well, I, I think I'm intelligent enough to keep a calm you know, a calm head and weigh out the situation before jump into a conclusion. But what I'm saying is, seriously, is what, it's such a rich, it's a ritual. And then the way she rolls for us, you know, there's this little things that she does in which she just stops doing those things. And I know that would be more than words. Because, you know, we, we're creatures of habit and we do things now, she makes the coffee with the intention for me to drink it and enjoy it. So that's that's our little thing. Instead of diamonds and <clears throat> a Rolls Royce, we've got coffee and spliff. Both far more enjoyable than diamonds or Rolls Royces. Well, uh, right, but different cultures, different uh, financial brackets, whatever you want to call it. You know, different people have different reasons to chase different shit. Me, I wanted coffee and spliff. Can't blame you so, there. So, no, but but what goes into it is, uh, it's a lot more than I ever thought I'd ever have in life. And it's something that's you know to some people it'd be something small, but to me it's a big thing because I really am a coffee addict and I do like my coffee. I enjoy it. And it's one of the few I'm not a big big on food and drink and all that, but man, that coffee is the, the best thing for me, to me. So, my luck, my fortune or fate or whatever you call it brings me and Cirque together and her talents are at the very things that I enjoy. So I go, wow, that what a coincidence. How the fuck do you find that? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Lucky. Right, right, right. But her interests are in making certain things a certain way. She's detaily like that, like with her art. You know, it's got to be a certain shade, and this has got to be a <laughs> certain color here and a certain idea there. It, and it's it's kind of enjoyable to watch somebody else, you know, and see them in that light. Like you're the guy that brings us the internet in a way, you know, because <laughs> well, we've been on the internet, me and Cirque, separately for a long time, but uh, we settled to RLM. You know, it's good. It, it's good enough for us. We're very comfortable with it. So. Um, when you do something or say something, I just go with it. See, why why doubt you? I I figure it like this: the day that you do misdirect us, well, I'll know it. So there was nothing to you know, nothing to prove here. I just go, yeah, Grim said this. Grim posted that. If I go to your post. I've never seen you post anything that didn't have a fact behind it to some degree, visual, verbal, something that you could put your fingers, well, you know, get post, your teeth into. I do post stuff for uh, comic purposes. Comic, comic relief is another story. We all do that. But like Cowboy Tech, Grammy Mary, um, there's, there's a few of my personal favorites, you know, that the stuff they post is it's good. And it's not because, well, I'm glad I know that because I feel so good about it. It's that, wow, I knew this was a lie. Other people are finding out it's a lie. So the more of us that together know it's a lie, eventually that, that's going to tip a scale somewhere and there will be an action taken, you know, like the hemp thing. Well, you can hope on that. And, and, and I've thought in the past that, uh, this, that, or the other thing is going to wind up being a tipping point uh, mm -hmm. for the basic consciousness of folk to, to wake up and realize and, and actually make a change and do something. Uh, but but that's it, it just seems to never occur. Well, not yet anyway. Um, so, mm -hmm. right, and and the stories they tell. See, they keep grinding the same old stories to the same old voters, that illusion, you know, keeping that alive with the media. 
I mean, you can prove and disprove anything you want to on the internet. It's oh, man, brilliant. I, I this do. is this is the greatest trap I've ever seen. I do I do uh, believe that uh, something in the next couple of weeks, something nasty is going to happen. In what something sense of a, nasty on, is going to happen? On a large scale, and I, I don't know whether it's going to be um, uh, war type thing or mm-hmm. economic economic type thing or mm-hmm. Something. Uh, I mean, because if you look at at the shape of uh, the the global financial system right now, and, and that's the basis behind it, of course, uh, as it always seems to be, is the global financial system is in dire straits. Uh, and at this point, the Monday is the whatever the end of official end of summer holiday mm-hmm. thing. Uh, unofficial, whatever. Uh, anyway, so so your your U.S. government. That's anyway. That's when it seems to happen. Um, is uh, in in this part of September when there's uh, when it's reached a point that uh, continuing on as it has been um, is not going to work. So uh, right, but they've they've they're tra- the five biggest banks. Tr- Claim they're trading five trillion dollars a day, over five trillion, and the, the number is just so huge that how it, it's not even believable anymore. It's well, why would they not? I mean, they probably are, and it, it, it's probably almost all in derivatives. But right, well, still, the, why do they do these things, and why do they tell us they do the things they do, and? It's so seemingly out of control. I mean, you can't stop this horse shit. It's it's a runaway train. Yeah, but well, of course, then it's going to wreck eventually, but I mean, the predictions I've been listening to the end is near since I can remember understanding what the end is near means. No, I'm not saying and, that the end is near. I'm saying that No, 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 no. Some, something big, gonna big happen. and nasty is going to happen yeah. that's uh, gonna cause yeah. everybody to right, freak and we've out. been so conditioned. We look at all the beatings. You know, it's. I don't know. I don't think the young people um, today. Well, of course, every generation gets a different, you know, uh, breeding or branding. Yeah, you know? different beating. <laughs> <laughs> well. I don't know because the the kids that I know here in Denmark are they're very civilized to me and nice, so I I don't really have a comparison back home. Well, and it's probably because those kids are treated with a degree of respect that you don't find here. Well, Cirque says on the train to the city, the girls are a little bit loud on the train and you know show offy. Very, girls, and and that reminds me of you know American <laughs> kids. Yeah, they're teenage girls. You can't really help that. <laughs> right, but I live I live here in the city, and I I don't really do much in interacting with the teenage world here. Outside of passing on the street, that's as much of as I'm going to see. I'm sure that's so, a good thing. Right, but I don't see them packed, you know, in a train, and how they. I, I'm a, I'm immune to that because I don't in, participate in it. <laughs> so the same girls that act one way in front of a circle when they encounter me at the grocery or on the way to it or whatever I'm doing around town, they're not going to behave that way in front of me. <laughs> well, they, it's I'm not sure going to happen. I'm, I'm sure they would if they were traveling in packs. Yeah, but they right, but they don't. When in town, two or three at the most, it's different. But on the train, there's like twelve of them or something. Right. So that's you know. Right. Exactly, and it's so. I'm. It's such a uh, a weird thing for me to be this isolated, but I'm. I'm really enjoying it. So the thing, and I get to just ask her, well, what happened today, <laughs> instead of actually having to go out and do it. So you never take the train anywhere. No, I'm done. I really. I don't. She wanted me to go to, to Hellrod, go do a few things, and I. No, I, I don't really want to bother. I spent I, I spent years hitchhiking wait, wait, back and forth are, across. Are, 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 are these are these things that needed to be done? 
everything in my life must have been needed to be done. I don't know why I did most of the stuff, but I just did it. So if she says, you, we, I want you to go here to do these things, then... Oh, her? Uh, oh, those things? No, it was for me, and I didn't really find it necessary to do it. Oh, all right, all right. No, no, no. If it had been for her, I would have done it. But it, no, nah, it something she wanted me to do for me, and I didn't want to. But there was a time where, hey, man, we're taking a train. Uh, let's go. Hey, man, we're driving. Let's go. Didn't matter where it was to or who it was with. Sometimes I just go. And, you know, and every event led into the next event that brought me to where I'm at. But the mindset all along has always been, oh, shit, I wonder what's going to happen this time. And that seems to have been capped. That's what I'm getting at is I don't have that curiosity anymore about, whoa, where could life take me? This is good. Yeah, no, I've... I've seen and done all I need to do. This yeah, time. right. You're home, you know, in uh, <laughs> New Mexico. I, I, you know? It's not that I've seen and done everything, and there's not maybe other stuff that might be maybe nice to do, but it's like, meh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, why bother? But yeah, I can go see that, but eh. <laughs> exa- Yeah. And then we got Cirk, who's very, you know, she's very comfortable with her country. You know, she's Danish. She likes being Danish. She doesn't like the politics here, but, you know, as far as the rest of it goes. The, uh, does, she like, does she like the politics anywhere? No, uh, my wife is not a happy girl when it comes to... We, yeah, well, wow. there we go. There we go. Yeah, no, she's, well, she's a smart her, girl. She's just definitely a smart woman there. Right, but she's very capable of uh, acclimating in the game. She acclimates. But I don't believe that it's anything more than, you know, part of the job that she's doing. It's not her. <laughs> You're right, Beth. That's the uh, that's the uh, rumor that all Canadians are real polite. <laughs> not in uh, Montreal, they weren't. Okay. Well, it's, it's the rumor. It's, it's the, the, what do we call it, the uh, stereotype. Well, this is like 20 years ago. I was in Montreal for a little period of time. I didn't find it very friendly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah social, see, socialist, capitalist, it's all a bunch of bullshit to me. I don't know. You can be whichever one you want. You still trade with little plastic cards and bow to some fucking idiot in a suit in an office or a queen in a fucking throne. It's all the same bullshit to me. I, I they're just people. I don't give a fuck. Let me see your papers. You know, oh, fuck you. Yeah. There you go. So what I found is when you live peacefully amongst the people you live amongst and you don't run around creating a big disturbance and there's no police to contend with in the first place, nothing's going to happen. Right, if there's nobody antagonizing you there, then no, and no, there isn't, and that would be that would be on me anyway. Because what could another person do that's going to bother me inside my house? What the fuck? Inside Nothing your, inside your house? <laughs> yeah, I'm inside the house. I mean, no, no, no. Oh, okay, it's not the other person's inside your house. <laughs> no, that would be interesting. No, that would but, be. That would you know, be... I'm American, so around here, they're Danish, and they don't speak English very good. You know, that's not their thing. So, And they're Danish, too, on top of that, that uh, have, privacy. Have you, they're uh, very uh, private. Have you attempted to learn the language there? Hell no. You've been there two years. You have not attempted to learn the language. Not a fucking word. Well, get on it. Why? Because it's, you need to be able to communicate with folk. Why? <laughs> no, I'm serious. The, no, I'm the, serious too. You walk into the a people, store uh, and, you, and you're yes. trying to find something, and you go up to the clerk. Well, mm-hmm. the clerk can't help you out because you're a stupid fucking American that refuses to learn the language of the land you're in. No, that's why I've got it written down in Danish if I don't know what it is. But I've been here so long, I pretty much know everything I need to get. You know, so. there's not a lot of surprises after two years. I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an experience that I had. Uh, 
Uh -huh. oh, I don't know how long ago it was, 15, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I'll say. Anyway, I was uh, working for this company, and I had to travel up to a portion of Los Angeles um, to do some testing up there. And so during lunch, I go drive down to the local, um, I don't know, El Pollo Loco, whatever, the one of some stupid fast food restaurant. And I, was, I had to order a chicken sandwich. And um, so, I, so I'm trying to ask the counter guy, can I have some mustard to, to put on that? And none of them, none, nobody working in the place spoke English. Not a single <laughs> fucking person there spoke English. And, and, he, and he starts freaking out like I, he thought I was saying mouse turd instead of mustard. <laughs> <laughs> so there I am in a foreign land without ever leaving, you know, <laughs> Southern California. I know. Exactly. And did you, did you know that there's only six million people in in, in Denmark, right? So, so you say. right. And, and just it's it's nice to be nice to people. And I just tell them if they really don't know me that my Danish is nothing more than humor. So let's just go with your English. Trust me, it's easier. <laughs> and they they know because Danish is a hard language to speak. So a little flattery just well, well I, uh, I don't want to do it. And, and answer me this if if you can. Um uh, if you learn Danish Yeah. Do you pretty much not know at that point several other languages? I don't know. German and Swedish and uh, Well, no, Cirk Cirk says she speaks uh German to a point. So no, they're similar but they're different. They have different rules and different well, right. uh, and, and, and different like, structures. It's like with English, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you kind of you know basic Spanish. You know, it's, it's a, the, the Latin based languages rather than the Germanic based languages. Right. Well, and like you, most people really depend on verbiage for an understanding of something. And me, sometimes I don't give a shit. You know, it's just words. And other times it g gets me to the core. I don't know why, but. Uh, I don't know if I can explain that. It's like what Beth had to say about, well, I was in Montreal, and that's some little bit of Canada. Look, you made the blanket statement, Canadians are polite, and I had an experience that said, no, they're not. They were Canadians. Well, that little bit. Well, you know, that's the whole point of what we were saying earlier. As long as we disagree, the bankers win. Get with the program. Okay, you're right. Canadians are the nicest fucking people on the planet. I hope that made you happy. Because I don't really care one or the other. I was I, just telling you about what I, I saw. I don't, I don't trust them up there. They're all sneaky and stuff, sitting right on top of well, the United States, you know. Hey, they saved a lot of American <laughs> life in the 70s, the Canadians. Not not extraditing back to the States when people went there to get out of the military. And I know draft dodgers, blah, blah. Well, you know what? That's life, man. Not everybody wants to go somewhere and murder somebody. So, you know. I would hope most people don't want to do that, yeah. Right, but the Canadians put a lot of Americans up and kept them safe through that bullshit they were going on in the States. I grew up through that. I was a teenager through it. Good, good, good. Not old enough to go, but old enough to you know be guided to what opinion you were going to have about war. Right. Anyway, and they made let's, sure... Uh, what? Let's, let's wrap this up here. We're down to oh, the last yeah. minute or so, okay. so... Uh, well, thanks, Grim. Mary said she'll be back next week to babysit me. Well, I sure hope so. <laughs> I appreciate it. And you're always a lot of help on here anyway with all this technical crap I can't understand. All right. Well, uh, coming up at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, you got Kira Young uh, with the bridge. And she'll be talking about some of that uh, pipeline stuff up there going on with, with the natives up there trying to protect their land and water from the interlopers that want to destroy everything. And then tomorrow morning I'll be on uh, at well at noon Eastern with the blues for you, uh, leading on into Hal Anthony, opening up his big old can of whoop ass. So I'm done. You got anything? Uh, yeah, we couldn't get your uh, replay from last night when we opened up this morning from the balls to the wall. It's there. We we tried opening it this morning and it okay. It's there now. It's been there. Okay. It was there last night. I don't know. 
I'll, I'll take a look he, at it, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. That's, that's something for offline talk. All right. All right. Well, you said, do I have anything? That was it. Okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> talk to you later. Peace. Bye.